and create a marker. All right. So from the uh, sort of like the playground uh, that we learned last time, no generics, they aren't going to work. Um, we want to come back to this code, remove this uh, for our state. We want to take the, um, the trait and we're going to use a box. So this state is actually going to be a box that holds a dyne, uh, a dynamic trait and uh, this dyne is like essentially dynamic dispatch uh, so it's going to happen at runtime as opposed to compile time uh, if we come to our events uh no wait not events we come to our states we have pub okay pub trait state so that's what we want state so player Super state, standing state, standing state. Actually don't know if we're gonna care about this that much, but here's that state. So state, so pub state, a box that has a dyne state. And that basically means that this is gonna be anything that implements this trait uh, state. This generic is gone. I was trying to even use generics with dyne. That that didn't work either. Okay, so you're gone. Uh, all right, so the standings um, is going to be a box new, which is then going to have a standing state. Okay, so that's happy there. Then we come back down uh, state.handle input. What are you upset about? This function takes two arguments, but one argument was um, supplied. Oh, right. So that's the, this is the other thing that we learned uh, is that we can't pass in the player um, as the, the actor for the state. Uh, unfortunately, um, I mean, because we can't do it because we're already getting a mutable reference to the, the player, the instance. So we're going to have to have like player data and have that a separate, um, a separate struct. So if I create a new file here, I would call this uh, player data.rs. Okay, so this will be pubstruct player data. And I'm going to dual screen these. These are in the same folder area. So in player, we'll just mod, mod player data. Uh, to me, this means that we should create a folder and have like player uh, as like the mod inside of it and player data as what it is modding. It, it's a little bit interesting the way that the folder system works with uh, sort of like the import export system. All right, so pub restrict data. Okay, so then all of the data part. So that's gonna be our location, our starting location, our height, and our width. Our acceleration like a lot of this stuff is now going to be uh, out of this and into here so our location is gonna be a vector too okay. so use ggz and algebra of vector 2 all right so you're gonna be a location vector 2 of f32 Um, that allows me to get rid of you. Uh, starting location, I guess actually we can, here, so starting location, height, width, acceleration, velocity, jump force, is jumping, but not the observers. I think just these. This is the actual data. So, Get you out of there. 
And so here's the actual player data, as it were, which means we're going to want player data, which is going to be type player data, uh, which of course we need to use it. All right, so obviously that's going to make a huge number of errors because it's not expecting that to be a separate uh, a struct now. So that acceleration, velocity, jump force is jumping, location, starting location. All of these things now need to go over here. So let's do a impul player data. Okay, so we're going to return a new player data. So for example, the location, uh, how are we getting, oh, we're getting the X and Y out of here. So that sounds good to me. We can just have the same X, Y, uh, which means that we can have our location. Oh, and we do need, well, our starting location could be copied from this. So. This is going to be location is going to be a vector two new from x and y. Okay, so that's um, that's this location and location like that. All right, next up, starting location. Our starting location is just a copy of this. So starting location is a vector two, new of x and y. So you go away, you go away. Next up, height. Um, we're just hard coding those in here right now, so height is 50.0, uh, width is 15.0. Uh, then we have our acceleration. Uh, so acceleration, we're just, oh, well, we're setting that to be a vector of, of no movement whatsoever. So acceleration, vector two, okay, so nothing. Uh, velocity, I think, is also the same. It's just a copy of this. Uh, jump force. Jump force is this vector here. And is jumping. Is false. And that should be all the data. So all of these things get to go away. And all of you, so height width, acceleration, velocity, jump force is jumping. So the observers get to stay and the state gets to stay, but now it's going to be the player data. Uh, and so we just need to pass in that starting location. So player data is going to be a player data new x and y. Of course, um, these things are all going to want to access that. So I'm thinking we're going to need to make a bunch of these um, public here. So for example, the width and height. So just going down, uh, what are you upset about? Unresolved input. Okay, let's restart the variety of servers here. No player data in player player data. There it is, and it's public. I don't know why you're upset. Uh, 
Okay. Who is upset about that? Is that Rust Analyzer? Oh, it is. Okay, so the Rust Analyzer. Is it, can I restart that again? No, okay. So even with restarting it, it is just not happy. Okay. I wonder if it's some other... Where, where is it? It's in the same folder. I wonder if it wants it to be in like a different a different folder altogether. All right, but regardless, uh, Rust seems to be able to find it, or RLS at least. Uh, okay, so just ignoring those two, coming down here, we have self that width. Okay, so our width needs to be um, pub, and our height needs to be pub. So this is going to be self dot declare data dot width and height. And that gets us uh, these. OK, so that's fine. Uh, we have our mesh. I think that's being stored outside of the player. And that, that's fine for right now. Uh, get location. So yeah, a lot of these where we're, yeah, it's not gonna be all of them. So I guess like wherever there's a self dot location, this is gonna be self dot player data dot location, and then wherever there's self dot Starting location, self dot player data dot starting location. Same thing for self dot acceleration. Self dot velocity. Um, okay, so we have self.state.handle input. Um, this is suggesting that we need to pass in two arguments. One argument was supplied. We need an actor that's a player, and we also need the player data. So I'll handle this one last. Let's continue fixing these. So self.height. data.height is jumping our jump force even and self that width I thought we already got that one I guess I missed it All right, so that's all of those. And so now you should be upset that these aren't all not found for the, the module. Interesting. Oh, to create the module, player data, create file, source, player, player data.rs. Oh, okay, I see. So it does want a folder named player and to move player data into player. Let's go ahead and move that. That should hopefully make it happier. So here's player data, obstruct. So 
So now, the source player, player underscore data dot rs. Okay, we have that. Let's restart the Rust analyzer. Okay, maybe not that one. Maybe it is RLS. Oh, it was RLS. Okay, that was the problem. All right, now all these fields are private, except those two that we arbitrarily changed. So let's go ahead and make them all public. Okay, so those are all public. That gets rid of a whole bunch of these errors. Uh, this function takes two arguments, but one is supplied. Okay, so now we're back to the handle input. So if we come to our states and we look at our mod, our trait takes um, an actor, which is uh, a specific player. Now, this would probably be better to make it a um, take a trait, which would be that special data, right? So we have this uh, pub uh, trait. If I do state data, if I don't even have anything in here, like no no functions necessarily. Uh, so this is outside of here in states. It's in our main game. We need to use this. So we're already modding game state. So using game state. Uh, and this is, uh, what is it? State data. Is that not out of here? Pub trait state data with state. Where did I get state out of? Oh, game state is different, yeah. This is states. Here's the state. So it's also going to be state uh, data. And that's going to allow me to come into our player data. Uh, I guess player first. Use super state data. Uh, and then by using that, we're able to come into player data and use super. Uh, state data. And now we can implement state data for player data. Now, of course, there's nothing to do here. We're kind of using it as a marker. So now basically anything that has player data can be can be used in this way. So we'll come back to our mod here. Uh, our actor is actually going to be a uh, mutable reference, I think it needs to be a, um, so I don't think I can put like a dying trait in here, right? I don't think I can do like dying state data just directly off of here. I think I have to box it up first. Yes, okay, so we're gonna box this. So it's a box that has a dying uh, state data, um, and I want this to be, I don't think it can be a reference inside of the box. Uh, it can be a reference to the box here. I think that's what it is. We're going to store it in a box 
in the player. So here's our, our player data. If I do box player data, so here's this player data new, box new, wrap that in parentheses. Okay, so then we're going to store you in there. Then in you, ooh, it could be a reference to the box. I need to make sure it's the same. It's the same box, like the same data. Uh, and I can't remember if, like, when you clone a box, if it's the same like as arc, where I'm I'm not cloning the data. I'm cloning just the box that, and still going to point to the same data. I can't remember off the top of my head. If that's going to happen. Uh, so then here in, in player, uh, handle input, we're going to hand the command over. And we're also going to hand uh, a reference to self dot player data. Uh, expected trait object, nine states, state data, bound struct. Did I not put? So here's this box, their data. Oh wait, nope. Okay, let's let's make it like it just a full. Let's not do anything crazy with references here yet. We'll we'll deal with that in a little bit. Okay, so we have a box that implements state data. Uh, here in player data, we're implementing state data for player data. And in the player, we're now storing that player data here in a box under player data. Um, we want you to just be the Oh, okay, so we, we moved on to the next next problem here. So we have our actor, uh, which is going to take a box, uh, a box which is not gonna be state, but state data. State data here. Expected type. This is my type. Expected type pound keyword mute. Oh, I have. Ah, oh, I keep on forgetting. Okay, so Rust uh, RLS is live. It just it just re like does the little mini recompilation and like checks. Uh, every keyword press that I do. I think it waits like 300, 500 milliseconds before running. Um, Rust Analyzer requires me to hit save and then it checks. I'm sure I could find some settings in, in VS Code to like check that, like make it happen all at the same time. But it is a little bit interesting where I'm like, why are you not working correctly? And it's like, oh, I have, right, I have two. Uh, I have two systems that are checking for me. The problem I find is that uh, RLS does some things, uh, Rust Analyzer does two different, like different things, and I want both of them. <laughs> I want them all together in one in one system. Maybe Rust Analyzer will get there. Maybe RLS will will beat it. I don't know. We'll we'll figure that out. But okay, so we now have this state for jumping state implemented. We can now actually do the thing uh, in here. So that that's super awesome. This also means that the player doesn't need to come in at all anymore which is really nice. All right, so method handle input has an incompatible type for trait. Uh, so our standing state, this is gonna be the exact same thing here. So we are going to replace you with a, uh, so instead of a, 
instead of the player, it's going to be the state data. And we're going to have a box, which is a dine state data. Box with a capital B, please. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, no field state on type. Okay, so this is where um, actor dot state. So this is where we're trying to actually affect the state here in in this um, uh, in the on the actor as it were. So off of state data, um, it wants to switch the state to jumping state. That's going to be interesting. Oh, is that because, let's see, standing date. Um, actor dot state equals jumping state. That doesn't seem right. State data. Okay, so in the player data, we have is jumping bool. Uh, actor dot, I think this would just be actor dot is jumping. So, right, so if we're in a standing state, is jumping. Oh, right, we're setting that to be a new state. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Um, we're passing in the state data. So that's a problem. We're, we're not able to like actually set the state. Meaning that we're gonna wanna pass that in too, aren't we? Because we need the state data. So it's gonna want It wants access to this state, which is a box dynamic state. And it wants to update that. Okay, so if we do that, here in, uh, which one is that? That is in standing state and handle input. So we have the actor, we have the command. I guess at this point in time, the only thing it's caring about isn't really the actor. It's caring about just the state, isn't it? Uh, what's the other state? The other state isn't implemented in any way whatsoever. So if we switch you over to handle input instead of the actor, let's do a, I don't think I can do mutable reference to the state itself, I'm guessing. And I don't think I want to put the state in into the thing. Let, let's try it. Um, so if we have like the state. So if this is a mutable reference to uh, what is it? It's it's um, a state. I guess it's going to be the trait that we need to do first. But standing state wants to switch to the other state. This state is a box dynamic state. We want a mutable reference to that box and then point it towards a new one. How do I how do I want to update that state? Uh, I think I had like one instinct to put the state inside of the player data, but that seems wrong. 
I could have another struct that just wraps around the current state that the player has, and that implements state, and then we can do the exact same sort of like box hold uh, with the player, and that will make it so I can dynamically pass that in. I think, so the problem that we're gonna run into here is with the player, if I try to hand over like a mutable reference to this here, I don't think I can. Uh, so you're a box dying state. If I just take you, I'm gonna mod. So let's say we, we ignore the actor right now. We have just our command. Uh, we have our current state and you. We're, we're gonna pass you in. So take you. And now we're gonna come over. So standing state. Uh, you're upset now because you need to be this. And so instead of actors jumping, now we're going to try to set the state to be whatever you are. Now the player down in handle input, uh, we're going to play handle self dot, what is it? Uh, self dot state. But I don't think I can do a mutable reference to it. Because mismatch types. Found mutable reference. Oh, expected. Standard box box. Oh, right. Let me just hand it this. Shove that state. Okay, so found mutable reference, standard box box, because it's still behind this mutable reference here. So, if I clone a box, do I get, oh, it's save again. Err, okay. Back to, back to standing and state here. So now we have, um, we want to say the state. Not is jumping. Uh, we want to set the state to a new jumping state, but we also want to wrap it. Um, so box new. Reference. So this overwrites the box. Let's see, I think, okay, so you're, you're fine then. Uh, now we're in the jumping state. So let's go ahead and replace you with, uh, we have our state, which is a box dine state. You're just upset because you're not being used at this moment, that's fine. Cannot move out of soft dot state. Right. Okay. So now, if I give you a mutable reference to this, now it's mismatch types. So let's go back to here. And in here. Okay, I'm not using state data, that's fine. You are a mutable reference here. Expected mutable reference, um, found struct, okay. Yeah, so now I'm reassigning the state. And I really want to reach into the box and change what's inside of the box. Now, I haven't looked 
it boxes too much. Uh, can is there anything to do that? Like, can I do uh, state dot and like reassign or something? None of this looks right to me. Let's open up Firefox and go take a look at the documentation for box. Okay, standard box box we have so allocates memory in a heap and then places X into it. I'm skipping the nightly only ones. I don't need to do anything into. Oh, you know what I can do? I know I know what we had decided that we we're gonna do. I, I for I forgot temporarily, probably because it was like the entire weekend. Instead of having this state um, sort of like update what this state is going to be, it's going to return a new state that the, uh, that the player should be in, if that makes sense. So it's going to take in this state that we're currently in. This could be a, a mutable reference. Well, it doesn't have to be a mutable reference to the box anymore. It could just be a reference to the box. Um, it could just be the box itself. And consuming it. The data should still stay the same. So moving the box around. So I guess the way I'm thinking about it is that we have the heat memory over here. And we have like the box, which is really just like a pointer towards the heat memory is. If we move this around, the heat memory stays the same. And this should be very, very cheap to like clone the box or do anything with it. It, it just is still pointing towards this heat memory. So we consume, we, we give ownership of this box to uh, this trait here. So we are going to give ownership over here, mismatch types, we're gonna give you uh, ownership, so self.state. You get ownership there. And okay, so you're then happy here. If let commands, okay, so if we are now going to be jumping, um, then we want to now return. I don't know what this, oh, the update function. That was something else. Now we want to return a different state. So um, return, oh, so that means we're going to return. Come back to our trait here. Uh, we're going to return a box dying state. So we're going to consume the box. And potentially, so return this state. Uh, so let's see, what is this? If if we have okay, if the command is a jump command and we're in a standing state, we're going to return a box new uh, jumping state. New. Otherwise, we're going to return the state.
So we take in state and we are going to return a box dine state, uh, which means in here we do have to return now uh, this state. Just to make the compiler happy. Uh, mismatch types for handle input. Uh, it's going to be the same thing here. These are jumping states. Command, we're not doing anything with you yet. Okay, cannot move out of self state, which is behind immutable reference. All right. So you need to be a reference then, so I'm not consuming you. Okay, so you need to be a reference and we're gonna overwrite you. That's, that is what's gonna happen. Okay, so we're gonna give a reference to you. All right, update all of these again. Reference. reference, and then the player, reference. Um, okay, so this is going to be interesting. Now, if we Oh, we could return an option. If it's none, we're not changing the state. And if it's something, we are changing the state. Okay, that's that's what this could be. Instead of doing a consumption, because we couldn't do that, uh, we should do an option, which an option is gonna hold the box dine state here. And you. Uh, are going to be a sum. Well, I guess in this case, um, we'll just do a none. Because we haven't really implemented jumping state yet. All right. So there's our option with that. Um, we're going to return a new one. So this is going to be a sum. If we have the new jumping state, otherwise we're going to return a none. Interesting, in this case, we don't even care about taking in the, the, the current state, do we? Like, we don't, uh, we know what state we're in. We're in the jumping state, this is the jumping state. Meaning that we don't even really need this. All right, what's next? Um, all right, well, then a bunch of things that aren't, aren't ever implemented. So the game may work, uh, but let's go ahead and, and take a look at this. So we now, Self that we need to handle this return value because we're returning this option, uh, which has a new potential state in it. So if let, um, I guess this is going to be sum and a new state equals we handle the input. Okay, so if this happens, then we want to say self.state is equal to the new state. Otherwise, we're not touching it. It's, it's just going to remain the same. And that's how we're going to stay in the jumping state or stay in the standing state.
Uh, and I believe when we start the jumping state, this is where we're going to have some of that data now. Uh, can can leave the player. Is that true, or do I want to stay keep it like in that that player? Um, so in our standing state, we get a new jumping state. The jumping state is where we say, okay, you're going to jump up and you, you move upwards. And at that first initial sort of like hit of the jumping state, that's one frame that it goes over there, we apply the upward force to the player. Can we, can we do that? Because I can't, um, I can't access the player. I can't. I don't think I can get a mutable reference to itself and like pass it in. If I were to do that, that would be the equivalent of in here saying, "Okay, we're back to an actor again." We want to apply the force. Unless I put apply force, if I have like the physics again outside of the player. So if I attach this not to the player, but to the player data, then I could do that. I don't know one way or the other which way is the, the best, like, or a really good architectural decision. If we put the data and the manipulation of data in the same spot, that would be the, um, the this player data. So if, if I have an implementation for here and we have like an apply force, which then changes the location and does all that sort of fun stuff here. So let's, let, let's do that. Let's uh, do a pub function apply force. So we take a self and we take a force, which we know is going to be a vector two of type F32. And we're not going to return anything. Uh, what happens inside of here is we just say self.acceleration plus equal uh, just plus the force. And that's it. That's how we apply the force. Then in that case, we just need this player data, which you already have here in the state data. So then we could have a function inside of here, maybe, to do this apply for us. Uh, okay, so we have jumping states, uh, state handle the input. When we create the new jumping state, that's when we really want to do it. It's like when it first comes in, this, hap this happens for one frame. It returns a new jumping state. If I could take in like the player data or like a mutable reference to it or something, and then uh, apply its own jumping force right there. That would be perfect. Or if we could tell the player to jump at that time to apply its own force, that would also be perfect.
I can't take in the player. We know we can't do that because that's behind a mutable reference. Would that work? If we change this back to like essentially a player for right now, uh, and, and mainly just a player because we don't have a, a trait for, for like the player itself. Then we could hand that in when we create the new one. We could hand the mutable reference into it. Whether or not I can pass the mutable reference out is a different question. Let's try it. Um, let's first save this all. So game design patterns. Able to compile again. All right, so let's bring you back. We have the super commands. Uh, for right now, I'll just do the player. And we'll just say, OK, we have the player coming in, which is going to be a mutable reference to a player. Wait, this is the trait. I don't need a default for this. Why did I feel I need the default uh, implementation of the handle input function? I think I was just like sort of bashing through a whole bunch of stuff. All right, so with that, now we uh, somehow, okay, so handle input, uh, self.state, so This is where it gets a little bit rough because I need to hand in self and I don't I don't think I can do that. Or maybe I can. Okay. Uh incompatible here, so we need the player again. Uh, mismatch types, expected num, option, option. Wait, this is the trait state. Oh, right. Uh, it's just semicolon. I don't actually need to implement it here. Method update. Okay, so method handle input. Incompatible trait. So you are state data. You're going to be a player here. Uh, I'm going to have a player, which is a mutable reference to a player. Right, okay, so cannot borrow self is mutable. Now, is are you already mutable? Can I do that? All right, cannot borrow self is mutable because it's already borrowed as immutable. It's borrowed as mutable there. Right, okay, so this is this is that entire problem. So I think we have to put that in we have to put the entire we have to put all of the the uh what is it? The physics stuff into the player data too? Or we have to have like a separate physics um struct that goes along with the player data. I'm thinking putting that as part of the player data works out for us.
So this is going to be the state data. Uh, state data is a mutable reference to the state data. What is the state data going to be? It's it's boxed up, isn't it? Or is it not? I do have it boxed up, but does it need to be? It was the state that needed to be boxed up. Oh, it does because, yeah, it does. Box. Um, kind of dime state data. Okay, so we're going to take in the state data there. Oh, I don't need to bring you in. I already have you, like you're, you're where it's created initially. Okay, so now, now we want to pass in this, uh, the state data, and we want to give you a mutable reference to it if possible. So here, we have this state data, which is this box. If I do a mutable reference to the box, self dot uh, state data. Oh, player data. It's not state data. Oh, I guess like state data is correct here because it's that box dynamic state data, but over here it is player data. Expected uh, trait object uh, dyn states state data construct player player data player data now our player data implements state data for player data so there is that expected mutable reference Do I just need to to up here instead of saying okay this is a box player data dine of state data Oh that makes you all happy No field width on type. Oh, right. Okay, so now none of you actually know what's uh, what's in there. If I put the mesh in the player data, then then all this stuff gets handled at at create time. But so here's where I need to put like into the trait, like get width, get height. Get location. So yeah, if I put this stuff on top of the player data, specifically the trait of state data, uh, then I'll be able to do this kind of stuff to it. 
But down here, notice that this is this is happy, like everything else is upset, but at least that is happy itself. Okay, that that's something. Uh, if we come back to, so we passed in the, the player data here. So in standing state, we have, uh, this isn't the player anymore. This is, what is it? I guess we have to just go through all these errors one at a time. So no field width on state data. So it doesn't know that there's a width on here because on this trait state data, we don't have anything that sort of sets that for us. I could have a default implementation that adds it in, and then it would then it would know that it's there. I don't know if that's a like best practice, but if I did something like um, we have a function set width takes a mutable reference to self. And a width, which is an F32. And then we say self.width equals to width. So if we do that and hit save, that should make it so that now it's aware that there is a width. No feel width on, on type uh, mute self. Oh, okay, but I don't. I guess I can't uh, state that you have a width. Is it can't say, oh, well, it's not like a um, interface where I can say, okay, well, these are the types that it's going to have. Uh, I'm going to have to have like a set width or a get width off of uh, the other thing. So probably in this case, a get width. We're going to return an F32 that now in our player data where we're implementing state data we have a function get width which returns self.width and then here where we have okay self.player data dot get with wherever wherever we need this um we don't need to pass in the width shouldn't need to do that which means yeah that's from when I was playing with set with. And also you don't need to be mutable. You could just be a reference to self, or data. Yeah, we don't need you. Okay, so that should make you happy. So this is just a bunch of fun refactoring. So we'll spend the, the rest of today's stream just doing these little bits of refactors. Uh, today's been just a refactoring day. Uh, as we sort of move move forward with it, with uh, where we where we need to go, but we're slowly getting there. Uh, all right, so self dot player data height. Uh, so now we need the same thing. We need to add a get height. Okay, so there's self to get height. Now let's uh, come back to wherever we have the player data dot height. We update you to get height. All right, what's next? No field location 
um, location. Okay, so uh, point. So get location. Also, this entire thing. I wish that like the red would show where the problems were inside of here. Because we have create mesh, which I think this is fine. New is fine. Uh, get location. I don't even know if I need like get location specifically. Good morning, Chantilly Cake. I hope your uh, your weekend was good. Because like get location, I think it's being used elsewhere. Um, but like get location. Oh, it's setting like a point. So. We've get location in this mod. We have get width, get height. Let's do. Got some stuff done. More to do. There's always more to do. Um, that's just what I found. Uh, so get location as point self, uh, and then this is where I guess I could just do. Um, this can be a ggez. An algebra point to F32 like that. Get location as point. It's then player data uh, function get location as point. So we have this self, and now we're going to return. A point to new uh, self dot location dot x self dot location dot y return that why are you upset um oh I don't have yeah vector two point two and so now we can come back to the player and we can just return. So get location returns uh, self dot player data dot get location as point. And so eventually we could even refactor this further to remove whatever like whatever reason we need this. Uh, so the more more I go through this, the more I realize like, oh man, I can just rebuild this from scratch and use these data uh, structures, the, uh, I guess not data structures, but the design patterns from the beginning and it will make everything so much cleaner and nicer. Plus the entire events uh, handling system from the observer pattern, I could see that actually uh, being super, super useful in deciding, okay, now it's time to change states. Like we're just observing it and it's so much easier. All right, so there is that get location. We have 46 errors left. Um, ooh, but it is 815. So I think I'm gonna try to work a little bit more on getting these uh, these errors sort of like reset for us. Um, maybe before the next stream, um, pot, like maybe otherwise, if I don't get to it, then we'll just be doing this next stream. Um, a reference to a box doesn't make sense to you. Yeah, I guess. It's probably not needed. I probably don't need it to be a reference to a box. It could probably just clone the box, and that's like a cheap, free uh, thing. Um, I just didn't look up whether or not cloning a box also clones the contents of the box. I don't remember off the top of my head. And I don't remember if this will state I get is I guess it is a pointer type for heap allocation, so I'd just be cloning the pointer type, wouldn't I? Does it implement clone? It does.
So returns a new, I don't think that that implement, like that copies the, uh, the heap allocation. Um, I think the best thing is to try it and see, see if it works. Uh, I wanted to like get all of the other errors out of the way, see if it works, then I can take away that reference and then try it again. But there's so many errors. I need to fix, fix all those. Um, but as I said, my time is up. I need to go to stand up with my team. Uh, so I need to go, you know, do actual work for the day. Um, so much debugging. That's like, it's, in, in one way, it's easy. Like the Rust compiler tells me exactly where the problems are and what the problems are. So it's it's not hard work. It's just a little bit tedious because I made a huge change. And so a lot of things need to be updated now. Uh, if you need multiple ownership, you could use an RC. I don't need multiple ownership at this point. I don't think. Um, Not not yet. I think it's a single owner just hmm. Do I want to do that? I don't know, I'll have to think about it. It's 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 a good suggestion. So thank you for that. Um I think the other part is like this uh sort of like the refactoring the game to sort of like be in a better better structure is that that's where it gets like really interesting. Um, and like, that's where a lot of this learning comes from, but, uh, yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to think about whether or not I want to do multiple ownership with that and pass that around, or if I just want to do any of the other systems, um, if it points to a mutable type, when you boxes, it's still mutable, if still mutable. Oh, when I box, so if I box it up when it's mutable, then it's still mutable when I pass it around. Interesting. I can still only have one reference to it unless I like use an arc mutex though, if I remember correctly. So I mean, so that's, that's a possible, a possible, they could use a mutex. That would allow me to have multiple mut mutable versions of it passed around. All, all interesting things. That being said, um, I do have to go. So uh, thank you everybody for, for watching. Um, next time I will continue with this. We'll see how far I get into refactoring on my own tonight. Uh, if, I, if I don't get, the, get to it, then we'll just obviously continue where I left off today. Um, with that, I am doing these streams every single weekday morning around 7 a.m. Uh, mountain time for about an hour, hour 15 minutes, uh, and then I've got to go to work. Um, so, uh, follow me here on Twitch and on Twitter if you want notifications for when I go live. And, um, with that, I am out of here. So have a great day and I will see you tomorrow.